man. They're coming to get you, and you're going to get your balls to the wall, man. <laughs> yeah, see, now, uh, Grammy, and I'm sure other people think that that means you're supposed to get your balls to the wall. But no, that means you're getting their balls to the wall. Those that would try and run and rule your life. Those are the balls that are getting to the wall. <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome. Here, this is Balls to the Wall right here on RealEverdyMedia.com. Uh, it's the second week in a row because Moose Girl's got another thing to do tonight. She's at the Blue Ox Festival there in her hometown of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. So uh, I'm here with you, Grimner. And this is RealLibertyMedia.com. Did I mention that? And it is June 15, 2018, 9.07 p.m. here in uh, the, the mountain time zone of the U.S. of A. And welcome to everybody out there that may be listening in the various places you may be listening in. Let's see here. We do have, I don't, I don't know if this is right. Is, could, this, could this possibly be correct? I don't think it is. Well, it is. It says I got I got a bunch of people on the uh, audio stream, so howdy to y'all out there on the audio stream. And uh, I don't know where y'all are, but uh, I, I, do see, I do see a, a crowd of folk out there. So welcome to y'all, some Scannies, uh, somebody from Kentucky. I think we know who she is. And uh, Moose Curl's still tuned in, apparently, even though I know she's not at home. And um, yeah, well, some other folks there on the audio stream. Also, welcome to those over there on Freedoms Network. Uh, you got uh, like one more week to go uh, before it gets shut down, so uh, enjoy. Um, <laughs> but don't worry, all you people on Freedoms Network, you know, if if it does get shut down, and, and it's looking it's looking that way, I don't I don't see any donations rolling in, so it's looking that way. But if it does get shut down, you're all welcome over here on RealLibertyMedia.com, and uh, just come over and say hi. If you want over there, you Freedom Network people, I can set you up a uh, a channel just specifically for Freedoms Network, so you don't need to necessarily mingle with those crazy folk in Real Liberty Media. And, and I'm fine with doing that. Also, I do have uh, on uh, the Real Liberty Media site, there is a forum there, and I think I made a specific uh, category for Freedoms Network. If not, I, I'll just do that this week. Uh, as it's uh, drawing close to the end, it's been a good run, uh, and maybe maybe some will come through. But I'm kind of I'm I'm seriously on, on the doubts on that one. Uh, as I've said before, uh, it seems like we only get uh, the donations from uh, one or two folk over there, and that just ain't real, that that don't cut it. <laughs> so that's all right. Um, we got plenty of other places you can join us on Minds.com. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm on there as Real Liberty Media, and um, Flash is not dead, but they killed Flash on Vaughn Live, <laughs> which is a good thing. Always good to see a uh, a video platform kill off the Flash. Um, not you, Flash. The Flash. The Adobe Flash. Anyway, so uh, well, welcome to all you folks that are, if you're tuned in over there on the Freedoms Network. And uh, keep your fingers crossed and uh, keep your wallets open. And if so, then, and we get some more time, then great. And if not, like I said, we got options. We got plenty of options. Uh, you know, like I said, we got the Real Liberty Media on IRC here. And we got the uh, the forum on, on reallibertymedia.com. And, and you got minds.com. And we're on the Twitter, too, for, you know, those of you that prefer that. Uh, as, as, as barman underscore RLM. So there's all, all those options. Anyway, welcome to all the folks here in the Real Liberty Media chat on Freenode. We got myself and the Cowboy Tech and the Barman and the Moose Girl and Miss Kate as Modius and Beth Z and Chelsea Zodi and Chloe and Free Enslaved and Graham Z, uh, the Java Doctor and JJ's and Juana Tucko, uh, f giving us nickels. Uh, Rain and the fluke bot Rob works the space walls. Uh, trust no one, Phantom Circle. Circle, are you still awake? Um, we got Colfax and Dakota and Flash Nasty, who may be doing a, a different version of Dork Table tomorrow. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see. Um, we got the Frumpy and Don C and Kozu and Pox and Pox and Pox. 
Oh, so much pox. And we got the Pone Sauce and Skittle and Vin E2. <laughs> Man, I tell you, it's hot. Um, my, my AC hasn't been working right for the last couple of days. Uh, it, and, I, and I would do something about it, but I know that it's just been... Uh, it's, it's, it happens every year for a couple of days. And so, uh, there's, I mean, it's kind of a waste to service it. Um, being as it's not really a problem. Cirque is sleeping. Aww. Uh, but um, uh, Flash and Vinnie the Poot are doing a dark table. He says today, I say tomorrow. <laughs> he's, he's a time traveler. He's way ahead. <laughs> oh, man. I think, what, eight hours, nine hours ahead over there uh, from where I am, anyway. Uh, so uh, we'll look forward to that. The uh, at the, the dork doing the dorkies at the noon Eastern there tomorrow. So that'll be cool. And uh, bit, 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 bit. what was I talking about? Oh, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. It's been this week. It's been like days over a hundred. Uh, well, Monday and Tuesday were over a hundred. Uh, Wednesday and yesterday and today have been in the nineties here. And um, uh just brutal. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully, and supposedly, tomorrow is supposed to be down in the 70s, uh, the high 70s, but still, a lot better than being in the 90s. Uh, uh, no question about that. And we're supposed to get a, a, a big old rain and thunderstorm rolling through. So, uh, kind of looking forward to that little thing. And hopefully it doesn't break anything, because uh, usually when we get the thunderstorms, we also get hail. So... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all kinds of fun. Now I put a um, like a little wind sock thingy on my microphone, so hopefully that will uh, clear up any kind of of uh, whatever distortions or something people said I've been having. So uh, yeah, I put this little wind sock on the microphone, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, like I said, if you if you if you're still hearing any cracklies or whatever. Um, let me know if it, if they're severe, or if they're just minimal. Live with it. Uh, <laughs> that's what I got to say about that. Um, but uh, well, other show notes. Um, oh yeah, I was talking about the uh, the folks over there at UCY possibly coming over. I'm thinking maybe not. I'm thinking maybe not because uh, it doesn't seem like um, I, they send me emails. And I'd sent, two of them did, anyway, out of all the people that, that Jules had over there. Two of them sent me emails, and I replied to them. But they ne they never got back to me again after that. Um, Grimnir doesn't crackle and pop like Viddy does. <laughs> uh, maybe Vinny is snap. I, I don't know. Um, I, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, any, anyway, <laughs> let's play some music. Oh, boy, I tell you. This first song is a is a forecast of tomorrow. Tomorrow's always tomorrow. It's never today. Today's always today. Today's never yesterday. Yesterday is always yesterday. But this is the meteors. <laughs> All right, yeah, it's Dorothy there. She uh, she rocks it, man. I'll tell you, the her band, uh, they're really good. Uh, in in my personal humble view. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's called Down to the Bottom, obviously. Uh, before that, we had Joe Bonamassa. Uh, yeah, it's doing a you know a little Indian sound there. Uh, it was Black Winter in Django uh, during the from the British Blues Explosion live, and we kick it off with the meteors in strange times are coming. It is, it is hot in this room. I tell you, man, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this show, just because of the fact that it's so hot in here. But, uh, you know, whatever, as they say, the show must go on and all that wonderful stuff. <laughs> I could sweat for a few hours, I suppose. 
Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. <laughs> oh boy, where am I at here? I'm I'm back to April 20. A 420. I'm back to 420. Looking at stuff here. I don't know how that happened. But I, I I scrolled up in the list a bit and I'm back here in the 420 zone and uh you, you know, I I thought about that, but I just like just like I said, it, it only happens once or twice a year, and and it's usually uh, in, on on uh, consecutive days, and then it goes away. It doesn't do that again. So uh, you know, eh, for the for the noise and all that, I just whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm okay. I'll deal with it. Uh, um, um, I can handle it. I suppose. Freak heat. Um, nah, nah just uh. I, I, don't, I don't know what causes it, but like like I said, once or twice a year, um, I, it happens where the AC just don't keep up with the heat. You know, it like it heats up real fast in the morning, and uh, I it, and right, and that's what I should do is relocate my my uh, my whole computer setup here. But man, that that's a that's a hell of a job. I got so much stuff. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, whatever. I ought to, but uh, I I can survive. Like I said, it's it's not it's not. Uh, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. It is what it is. Now I got a, I got a helpful hint here for y'all. I suppose this is a helpful hint. <laughs> Uh, depending on who you are <laughs> and what you might want to do, uh, yeah, yeah, this would require a team of of people to move from one room to the other, and especially I'd have to clear out the other room. And anyway, <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> enough of all that. Uh, here on Reason dot com, they posted this this up here today. Was this today they posted this? I think it were. Uh, for what, why, why is there no date on this article? It doesn't matter. I'm sure it's just as good from yesterday as it is today. But anyway, on Reason.com, it says how to legally make your own off-the-books handgun. Build a Glock 17 using parts from the internet. Yeah, this article is a part of Reason's special burn after reading issue where we offer how to's personal stories and guides for all kinds of activities that uh, somebody could do and, and happen on the, on the borders of the legally permissible behavior let's start with a disclaimer if you have little or no experience with guns it's probably not the best idea to try assembling your own uh, it could be dangerous you could make a mistake even a deadly one there's no shame in buying a firearm from a reputable manufacturer and then taking a class to learn how to handle it safely defensively and intelligently but then you got to go through all that government bullcrap to do it so you know that that's that's, that's part of that um, it says but to do it yourself has a great appeal as well for those who've already made or already have basic firearm know-how and competence with common tools, it's easy to make a gun that's just as safe as the one bought from the store. It's also perfectly legal in most American jurisdictions. That simple fact tends to be ignored by pundits and politicians in the debate over gun control. But even if moderately skilled people can create their own weapons at home, and increasingly they can, then passing laws to regulate commercial manufacture and sale starts to look awfully futile. While the firearms restrictionists will likely soon be clamoring for laws to rein in private production, there's only so much they can do. Communicating instructions for how to build a gun is constitutionally protected speech, after all. In celebration of the First Amendment, let's walk through how to make a weapon based on one of the most popular semi-automatic handguns in the world, the Glock 17. 
a full-size, double-stack, 9mm pistol with a track record of reliability and simplicity. Anyway, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I, I will read you this little tidbit that I highlighted earlier today. <laughs> it says, if you send the ATF an object, the Bureau's experts will explain why it is or isn't a firearm, according to two main laws. The Gun Control Act of 1968, defined, which, by the way, the NRA was behind, uh, for those of you that think the NRA is for gun rights, no, they're for gun restrictions. But the Gun Control Act of 1968 defines a firearm as any weapon which will or is designed to or may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive or the frame or receiver of any such weapon. The National Firearms Act, meanwhile, says the frame slash receiver is part of a is the part of the firearm which provides housing for the hammer bolt or breech block and firing mechanism and which is usually threaded at or 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 at its forward point to receive the barrel oh well you know goober probably does that regardless <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, expute? No, they. Uh, well, maybe. I, I guess that's. It all depends on how you look at it as to whether or not they expute something. Um. <laughs> as long as, as long as they don't uh, prematurely expute, I guess that's all right. Um. <laughs> Anyway, there's there's the link to that. You you know how to uh, so so you too can make your own gun, um, and, and it, it you know tells you how to do pretty much do the whole thing there. Uh, you got a list of all the tools, all the parts, all the uh, assembly instructions, and it, it's it's just not that difficult of a thing to do if you want to have a legally made home own gun that is not part of the government's nosy business. So there, government, you can make your own damn gun, handgun at home. <laughs> yeah, go, go, gadget gun, uh, something like that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> now, I, I know Grammy covered this on, on Wednesday, but I'm going to cover it again, because I just like the story. And, and, and some of you may have missed it, I don't know. Either way, I'm going to cover it, and you're going to get it right here, right now, from thefreethoughtproject.com. But who will build the roads? <laughs> Domino's launches initiative to fix America's potholes. Domino's Pizza is pledging to repair the roads in cities across the country in a new campaign that finally answers the question, who will build the roads? While the question of who will build the roads is typically presented as a problem that only government can solve by statists, Domino's Pizza is now responding by launching a campaign to fix potholes on roads across the country. Domino's is encouraging customers to nominate their towns for pothole re repairs at pavingforpizza.com. So far, there are already four different cities that have benefited. Like I said, uh, Grammy covered this. I don't need to go through it all. But but the thing is, um, and and I, I don't necessarily need to cover it that way. Uh, all I'm saying is every time, <laughs> every time you get one of these status scumbags uh, saying that, oh, yeah, we need government to do this, that, and that, uh, and because and, you could apply this to anything. I'm not, not just talking about roads here. I'm talking about anything the government says they provide, which... They only provide using stolen funds, using uh, private labor, meaning you could pay for it yourself. <laughs> and that would work just as well. Uh, might work better. I'm sure it would work better, and you wouldn't be, be paying for a bunch of crap that you weren't interested in paying for, like wars. 
Yes, and you wouldn't be paying for all them cop shops. You know, you, you could uh, get your get your own uh, private security set up for your community, uh, which was um, not enforcing rules, laws. They call them laws. They're not laws. Enforcing things that that affect nobody else. Your your private security people would take care of people that are trying to steal crap from you or trying to harm you or trying to kill you. Yeah, that's what your private security people would do. Stuff that really actually affects you. Flash points out that it proves government is useless. Yes, well, if, if you needed proof, it uh, this does do that. And it is a fiction. Wanataco, quite right. Um... <laughs> Anyway, it says here, a perfect example of the very situation was in the news a few years ago on Hawaii's Kauai Island when private citizens, what a phrase, private citizens, <laughs> when people, normal everyday people, performed a $4 million road repair job for free in just eight days. When a need arises in a community, people, not private citizens, people naturally come together and take care of what needs to be done. They don't need someone forcing them to do it, whether they like it or not. It says, we shouldn't have to do this. But when it gets to the state level, it's just so bureaucratic. Something that took us eight days would have taken them years, says Troy Martin of Martin Steel, who donated machinery and steel for the repairs. So we got together, the community, and we got it done. <laughs> and we got it done. <laughs> oh, what the hell happened there? I, I think I clicked on the wrong thing. Let me put that in there because I, I, I somehow wound up in the uh, uh, sound. Uh, somehow wound up in the uh, in the wrong zone, or something. There's something something goofy going on. Oh, I don't know what that, what, I don't know what I've got going on. Uh, I got my tabs all in the wrong order. <laughs> My tabs are all moving around on me. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Anyway, anyway. get her done. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, you know, if, if uh, wh whatever it is, whether it's Domino's filling potholes, because they got money and it's a great advertising gimmick, as Kate pointed out the other night uh, during Grammy's show, uh, which it is. It's, a, it's an awesome... Uh, advertising gimmick. You know, hopefully they're not going to fill the potholes with pizza. <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, another government issue here. Because you hear it all the time. People are always clamoring for legalized marijuana. And you know Canada's uh, kind of in the midst of that, but uh, I actually, you know what, I'm going to save this story for after this set. I'll go ahead and play another set right here, and then uh, we'll, we'll get to that Canada, that little Canada bit in a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> How the hell y'all doing out there? Alright, this is... Um, this song here is a song by some guy they call the Red-Headed Stranger. To me. Oh, yes. Don't bogart that joint, my friend. Pass it over to me. <laughs> That's a fraternity of man there. Uh, for those of you unaware who that band was, yes, indeed, don't bug out that joint. Before that was Mark Knopfler with a little song called Coyote and scenes from uh, the Roadrunner in the Coyote cartoon show. Uh, we kicked it out there with Willie Nelson, Ready to Roar. And you may be saying to yourself, that set was not very balls-to-the-walls-ish. But you'd be wrong. Every one of those songs is totally badass in its own way. <laughs> uh, 
so I just have to say that I would have to say that. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, roll another one. I can't, I can't do that whole roll thing that guy does, man. He he, he goes on way, way, way uh, too long for for my my breath to hold out on his roll. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, yeah, we could do this one, too. Why not? Why not? Three in a row from back in March. <laughs> right. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. All righty. Um, okay. Well, no, we're still going to wait on this one. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's wait on that one. Do one other one, and then we'll go back to that one. Oh yeah, let's do this one. Cause what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> Unbelievable! Wrongfully imprisoned for thirty-one years, and this is considered justice. On Zero Hedge via the Daily Bell. After spending over three decades in prison for a crime he did not commit, Lawrence McKinney was cleared of charges in 2008 after DNA evidence was tested. It took another year for government to release him from custody. They sent Lawrence out into the world. He didn't know. But they didn't leave him totally empty-handed. The government gave Lawrence $75. $75 to start a new life after being wrongfully caged by government prosecutors all those years ago. What can you do when it takes thousands of dollars to even hire a lawyer for the slim chance of seeking redress of grievances against, in this case, the state of Tennessee? Luckily, Lawrence had the support of a prison pen pal who became his wife. She, his church, and charities focusing on the innocent people, wrongly incarcerated, helped him take care or take the government to court. At first, it was an uphill battle. Although Lawrence McKinney was cleared of the charges, he had to prove his innocence in order to be fully exonerated, to become eligible for a payout based on the state's mistake. It took an act of the governor, but finally, a decade after being cleared, McKinney received the maximum amount allowed by the state of Tennessee, $1 million. CNN says he finally gets justice. CNN considers that justice. This is justice? A million dollars might sound like a lot, but it's actually just over $3,200 per year. I mean, $32,000 per year. Um, he spent in, uh, that, that he spent in prison. It's $25,000 per, per year for the time that elapsed between his conviction and his final justice, the $1 million award. If Lawrence was paid $32,000 a year per, per year incarcerated, and that money was put into an account with just 1% interest compounded yearly, it would have accrued almost $200,000 of interest. But in 1977, the year that he was imprisoned, the interest rate for a 10-year CD was about 6%. There were similar rates in 1987 and 1997. At that rate, uh, Lawrence could have earned a total of $1.9 million in interest over the incarceration period for a total of $2.9 million. Lawrence McKinney is now 61 years old. He got the first lump sum paid out of $353,000 and will go, will, will go almost entirely towards legal fees. Then he will receive $3,300 a month until the $647,000 remaining dollars is gone. McKinney will be 77 at that point. Adjust for inflation, and by the time McKinney receives his final payment, the $3,300 per month will be worth a mere $2,400 in mere purchasing power. Uh, by the way, if you have $3,300 now, that's what your 
$3,300 will be worth in 10 years, assuming everything stays pretty much the same. You are being taxed by inflation, basically is what that comes down to. How sad that the government feels that a life they ruined is worth so little. But what is a human life worth? The federal government actually has answers on this. It turns out the EPA values a human life the most at a whopping 10 million bucks a head. I never knew the EPA cared so much, or at least they care about their costly regulations being worth the cost for how many human lives they might save. The Department of Transportation and the FDA also have a value of human life over 9 million bucks a head. Again, they are required to calculate the cost versus benefit of their regulations. They do this by putting a value on your life. But how interesting, when it comes time for the government to pay out the value of a human life, the figures suddenly drop like a rock. Even if you consider 31 years in prison, to only have stolen one th and to have stolen one third of the man's life, that should still figure out to at least three million dollars. The board that chose to repay McKinney actually said they regretted that the Tennessee law did not allow them to give them more. Aw, oh, we wish we could give you more, but you know that's the law. <laughs> and yet somehow McKinney has remained very positive. He said all he wanted was to clear his name. The money, he said, is just an extra nice little bonus so that he doesn't have to work so hard at his age after slaving away for 31 years in the Tennessee prison. You don't have to play by the rules of corrupt politicians, manipulative media, and brainwashed peers. And they tell you to go ahead and subscribe to the Daily Bell. Um... <laughs> And they have a thing here that you can uh, click on and go, go and check it out, how to craft a two-year plan uh, to retain specific freedoms. Uh, and the guide will show you exactly how to plan your next two years to build the free life of your dreams, should you find that somehow possible. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what they do. That's what they, that's, that's. That's that's what they do with uh, when, when it's you having to pay them, and then it's ten million bucks ahead, and when it's them having to pay you, it's nothing, basically. <sighs> yeah, yeah. This one here, um, I, I found it kind of interesting, just because some of us are those people, some of us. Us are they? <laughs> Spectator.org, the American Spectator, and the, the article is titled. It's a special report. It's entitled "We Teenaged Coots in the '60s." Now, I, I'm not quite old enough to be um, in the group that he's talking about, but not that far off. Here we go again, a half a century later. I turned 70 this week. I'm a certified codger. But I was a codger as a teenager in the 60s, along with millions of other conservative, oh wait, even evangelical, uh, dismayed at the revolutionary and consciousness-raising developments adored by the media. We were the ones who eschewed drugs. He was one of them. Uh, joined the scouts. He was one of them. And signed up for the military. Oh, I, I, think, I, I think I had saved this for a specific funny thing but I, I don't I didn't highlight it I, or my highlight didn't stick one of the two either way I'm not gonna read it to you but I'll give you the link to it uh, because you know um, you, you all know people like this that were that way they were the the squares <laughs> they were the ones that considered themselves to be good people while you rotten dirty hippies you filthy hippies were uh, on the other end of things. <laughs> yes, I'm a square. No, I was not a square, but that guy was a square. Um, I, was, I was a, I don't know what I was. I was a punk. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, this, oh, this is what I already had that open. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Did I share this with you last week? I think I did. I think I already shared that one with you. Um, the one about the uh, the idiot that got hit by a bus and is happy now because they can pay off their loans. I'm pretty sure I covered that with you, so I'm, I'm just going to skip that one. Dumb girl. <laughs> like Hans is now. Yes, Hans is an idiot now, just as uh, that guy was that wrote that article back in the 60s. Thinking the government was all this wonderful stuff. We'll just cover this one here. Because I, I think this is important. It's on High Times. Hightimes.com. Five years. Five years. Oh, did I forgot to put that other... Oh, yeah. I gotta, hang on a second. Uh, I'm so confused. <laughs> oh, man. I, <laughs> I've been doing some goofy stuff. And, and I think it's the heat that's causing it. Um... That, that's making me do goofy things that I, well, maybe, maybe it's not, I don't know. Maybe it's just me being goofy. I could be wrong. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I got to get, uh, going solo, well, yeah, it is, it is far more dangerous going solo on the radio than going with somebody else. Because you, you, there's, there's no cover. You have no cover. Anyway, if you hear from High Times Magazine uh, on, on the web, five years after legalization, Uruguay faces cannabis supply problems. According to local experts, Uruguay faces cannabis supply problems five years after the government legalized the plant. Yeah, five years. Uruguay is facing cannabis supply problems. The South American country was the first nation to legalize marijuana back in 2013, but legal sales of cannabis began just last year. So it took them four years to even start. The law was al allows registered consumers to purchase up to 40 grams, about an ounce and a half, of cannabis at a participating pharmacy every month. 40 grams once a month. That's what the law allows for. But so far, only 14 of approximately 1,200 12, <laughs> pharmacies in the country have actually registered to sell cannabis. Wine sommelier uh, Laura Andrade recently had to take the bus to reach one of the pharmacies that sells cannabis. But when she got there, the shop was out of stock, and an employee asked her to come back the next day. Andre told the uh, Associated Press she would just use the black market instead, like everybody else does. I work. I can't come here every day, she said. Today I'll have to buy from an illegal dealer. I have no choice. The system is crap. It's useless. Government is in charge of the supply. Uruguay's legalization statute allows licensed individuals to cultivate cannabis. Growers and users can establish clubs to share marijuana as well. But the government is in charge of the production of cannabis for sale at pharmacies. So far, they've only licensed the two cultivators to provide marijuana for the legal market. Diego Oliveira, head of the Uruguay National Drugs Council, told reporters he's aware of the supply problem. He didn't mention that he also doesn't give a crap. The demand is greater than our productive capacity, he said. We have to address that challenge. Yeah, maybe. When we get around to it. Together, the two cultivators are licensed to produce four metric tons of the pot annually for sale at pharmacies. But they only recently began to grow at capacity, Oliver said. Uh, the growing pains of the new industry are responsible for the slow start. There was no experience with farming on a large scale, and it took a while to finally nail the technology. The workforce, the dying, drying process, he explained. Collectively, the licensed cultivators, cultivators 
individual growers and clubs that can produce about 9 tons of weed per year. But Oliveira acknowledges that up to 25 tons of cannabis are consumed every year in his country. <laughs> uh, do a little math there. I think that's pretty easy. 14, uh, uh, 16 tons, 16 tons. And what do you get? Another government program that doesn't work. He also noted that government officials are considering adding more licensed growers. Edward Blasinia is an agri agronomy, agronomy, agronomy engineer and a minority investor in the cultivation companies. He also cited inexperience as an obstacle to producing cannabis at full capacity. It's a complex crop. The investors behind these companies didn't come from a culture of cannabis, he said. No shit. You tell them you need to buy 50 fans, something that is very necessary in some instances, instances and they'd look at, at you like you were an alien. <laughs> Proponents hope legislation will help stem the country's violence. Well, not if you're doing it the way you're doing it. Uruguay's legalization drive was in part an effort to reduce the violence of the black market drug gangs. But so far, the killings have increased since pot became legal. Well, because you haven't even started selling it yet, idiots. Uh, gang killings, most involving drugs, are responsible for 59% of the homicides during the first three months of this year, according to the Interior Minister. Former President Julio Maria Sanguinetti, who opposed cannabis legalization, told Telemundo Television, the plan is not working. Well, it's not because it's not... It's because of the way you're doing it. Because you're an idiot. Because you're all idiots. There have never been as many drug traffickers and drug violence as today, he said. It's going to be a, a year in July since the sales and pharmacies began. Yeah, two pharmacies for the whole country. Uh, <clears throat> Oliver said, we never thought about eliminating the black market in a short time. It was always a gradual thing. This, do this doesn't happen overnight. Well, it's never going to happen the way you're doing it. Malt beverages. <laughs> oh, a bunch of dang morons. Anyway, in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, up in Canada, they've also legalized weed. In a weird, really strange, oddball way that they've done it up there. But they have. Up in Canada, they've, they've legalized weed. And, and there's a little, uh, I have a little video here to share with you um, uh, about uh, their legalization and, and the way that they're, they're planning on getting everything working and going. Here it is. Very instructional. Oh yeah, a little Justin Johnson there for you. That was called Bootleg Turn. It's uh, an original rockabilly from the man. Yes, indeed. Uh, he's, he's a cool player, swamp music kind of stuff. Uh, before that, we had Crucified Barbara and Rock Me Like the Devil. Uh, pre preceding that was Power Wolf doing Gary Moore's Out in the Fields. And we kicked it off with... Uh, a little video by them Canadian morons uh, discussing how they might like to legalize weed, and it's not a very pretty picture. <laughs> not at all. Uh, but totally believable. Totally believable. So uh, there's that for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What the hell's that? Oh, I see. I see. I see. Hey, hey, don't be starting videos on me without me saying it was okay. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, all right, I'll do this one. Oh, okay. I see. This is like a double. A double double. Excellent. It's still hotter than hell in you. Right. 
Now, what do we got going on here? You don't tweet. Well, hell. <laughs> you don't have to tweet to read tweets, by the way, in case you were wondering, in case that was like a, a matter of concern there for you. Howdy, Rob. Howdy, Capotech. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, I'm going to close that one. All right. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I don't know why this is a story. I mean, it should be common knowledge at this point, but it came out uh, the 9th, which was, uh, what the hell is today? Saturday, last Saturday. And it says it's breaking news. Breaking news. I, I don't know if it's actually breaking news. Anybody in here that's surprised by this story, you let me know. <laughs> ISIS terrorists are only what? I let me read that again. ISIS ter terrorists, ter terrorists, terrorists are only present in U.S. controlled air areas in Syria. That's right. ISIS only exists within the U.S. controlled areas. Uh, the Islamic State's last pockets of resistance are located inside areas controlled by the United States forces, the Russian Ministry of Defense spokesperson uh, uh, Karkona Shkankakov said uh, that morning. As for the current situation in the Syrian Arab Republic, we recommend the Pentagon chief to examine the map showing the situation in this country. All remaining pockets of resistance of Daesh terrorists in Syria are located only in areas controlled by the United States. The spokesman noted that the Russian Defense Ministry was bewildered by the verbal manipulations of Mattis regarding the situation in Syria, stressing that the expansion of the Daesh terror group to Syria had become possible due to criminal omission of the United States in the international and the international coalition. Uh, the Russian general was, was responding to U.S. Secretary of Defense James Mattis, Mad Dog Mattis, to some of you. Oh, there he is. Uh, speaking of mad dogs, uh, claims that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad was creating problems in his country by invading both Iran and Russia to enter Syria. Furthermore, the Russian MOD spokesperson slammed the U.S. ventures in Syria, adding that their weapons often fall into the hands of terrorists. It'll fall into them. They're, they're handed to them. <laughs> At this time, Washington focused on financing and direct arms of supplies to fictional Syrian opposition, totaling hundreds of millions of dollars, way into the billions of dollars. However, the vast majority of U.S. supplied arms of ammunition and ammunition fell into the hands of the Syrian Al-Qaeda branch Nusra Front terrorist group banned in Russia. How do you just ban a terrorist group? Huh. Anyway, and Daesh, who sought, like Washington, to overthrow the legitimate Syrian government. Now, I, I don't know if that's really breaking news to anybody. Anybody surprised at all by that that, that little story? To me, it's it's just common knowledge that all... all who who call, Well, apparently, who calls this news slash is globalresearch.ca. They say it's not just news, but breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I feel fairly broken myself, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I got, I got so many like tech articles in, in my list here that, uh, well, sometimes, I, I almost go to them. Anyway, 
here's another um, not quite maybe so breaking news. I, 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 I don't know. I'm pretty sure I didn't share this last week, but I could have because it did come out on the 7th. You know what? Maybe I did. But I'm, I'm going to give you the link again anyway. I'm going to put the link into the blog post. And I'll, and I'll just tell you because still a shocking story to me. Well, it should be a shocking story to me. Totally expected story to me. Cop mistakes autism for drug use, beats innocent child on video, taxpayers to be held liable. Uh, 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 like I said, this, this story could happen any day, every day. And it does happen every day. Um, but, but there's the article for you on thefreesodproject.com. Like I said, I think I shared that last week. I, I can't be positive, but I'm not going to go through it just in case I already did. I didn't really save too many stories for this week um, to share with you. So, uh, eh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking through my things here. And, and some of you probably are not really interested in a lot of these things, uh, these, these tech articles that I have available. Tell us about, well, I, I, I did not fight in Vietnam, um, flashy. Um, I was only, well, let's see, when did it supposedly end, 73? I was only 13 at the time. Yeah, 12, 13 years old at that point. <laughs> Let's just hear some more music. I, I, I don't really have too many stories lined up for you. Uh, I, I must have been distracted or something this week. Ended seven. Yeah. Either way, I was born in 1960, so I, I was a, I was I was born. Luckily, born a little too uh, late to get into that. <laughs> and that was the last draft and. Without a draft, they weren't going to get a hold of me. That's for darn sure. Anyway, here's a uh, Space Wolf request by a band called uh, Budgie. <laughs> Scream if you want me, because I want more. Yes, indeed. That there was uh, Rob Zombie with Never Gonna Stop. The Red, Red, Groovy. Red, red, groovy. Before that, we had the Rolling Stones with Gary Clark Jr. and John Mayer doing Going Down, a live version, of course. And we kicked it off with Budgie, and I turned to stone. <laughs> oh, so they're, they're getting a little bit of harassment there in the, ch in the chat channel. Chat channel on IRC. Uh, saying, hey, hey, you don't have enough stories, you have to make some up. And, and I'm not sure I could do that. Um, I, I used to be kind of a creative writer back in the day, but uh, I haven't really tried so much anymore. Um, but but I, I might be able to, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I remember this one time, I was heading off for Utah, I was probably like 16 at the time. Well, I was in Utah, actually. And I had written back to a letter. I'd written a letter. Yes, to some of my friends back in San Diego, my roommates that were back down there. Uh, kind of explaining how it was up there. And it was so, so serene and pastoral. And, and they, they wrote me a letter back saying they were, they were concerned about, about my, my state of being. Because oh, what was going on? I, see, I seemed way too... Uh, <laughs> unlike myself at that point in time. So I wrote a story. I, 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 I can't remember the exact story that I wrote, but I can tell you it was called The Adventures of Radman in Mormon Country. <laughs> Me being Radman, of course, in Mormon Country being Utah. Um, <laughs> so... 
Oh, those were the days, I'm telling you. Um, yeah, it was a great story that I wrote back, and, and they were all relieved after they got that story because they knew that I was okay. <laughs> oh, man. But, 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 and, and let me let me try and see if I can share this here with you. Because uh, Poxified listed, he said, he said, I should tell you the story of Seaweed Sally. And I read the story of Seaweed Sally during that during that last musical set there. And I'm not really impressed with Seaweed Sally. I mean, it's got a nice name to it, but here, I'll, I'll give you what they've got you on this page here. Scaryforkids.com slash camp stories. Seaweed Sally. Seaweed Sally is a ghost that haunts a summer camp. Years ago, she was a camper who went canoeing in the lake with a friend. Sally couldn't swim, and her friend started goofing off and shaking her boat to scare her. Sally freaked out, stood up, and screamed. The boat tipped over, and Sally fell out. She disappeared under the water and was never seen again. The camp counselors presumed she drowned. Even after they drained the lake, they never found her remains. The morning after the accident, Sally's friend was woken up by something dripping in her face. When she opened her eyes, she saw wet seaweed hanging from the bunk above her and a trail of wet, wet footprints on the ground. Yeah, scary for kids? If you got kids that are scared of a story like that, <laughs> yes, something wrong with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> I could try another one on there. Um, we got some really short ones. Okay, let's try Mad Molly. It's only like a paragraph. Mad Molly was a campfire story about a crazy girl named Molly. She killed a cat by tearing it to bits and was sent to the insane asylum. However, there was a fire in the 1950s, and she was in it. She was never found after the fire was put out. And then she came back to terrorize the camp. Well, these must be written by kids, not scary for kids. <laughs> what is this? Oh, God. <laughs> that's just funny. That's just, that's just, that's just what that is. All right. Uh, I, I, I can't really. Let me see. I'm getting some comments here in the chat room. Uh, Han Sol. People listened to this nutcase minister in the past, Wineland, who previously predicted the world would end in 2011 and then in 2012, now predicts that Jesus will return on June 9, 2019. Well, he's, Jesus has been here all the time. You've been calling him a dirty hippie all these years, Han Sol. You thought that, oh, that's just another dirty hippie. But no, that was Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, Jesus remembers you calling him a dirty hippie and, and saying bad things about pot smokers and homeless people because he is a homeless pot smoker. He don't need a home, and he's going to come and get you. He going to get you. <laughs> the hash slinging slasher. Hash slinging slasher. They can sling some hash my way. I, I'm good with hash. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got no problem with that either. I think I might have had another story up here in my list. Let me let me see what else we got up here. No, I gave that one to. Uh, I, I can still do it. I gave this I gave this one to, to Grammy earlier, uh, but but that's all right. She may have a different take on it than I have on it. I don't know. Here it is. F hash. Kate Von Dees, whoever that is, unborn baby receives death wishes after an anti-vaccine announcement. This is on Infowars.com. It says, we have hesitancies and valid concerns about injecting our baby with specific chemicals and toxins. It goes on to say, 
celebrity tattoo artist and just soak that in just take that soak that in for a moment celebrity tattoo artist what <laughs> How in the hell is there a celebrity tattoo artist? <laughs> anyway, Kate Von D on Thursday revealed that her unborn baby's been the subject of death wishes after she announced plans to forego vaccinations. Other people wanting to get into your life and tell you what to do, and if you don't do what they want, they wish you and your unborn baby dead. The controversy began last week after Von D complained she was tired of everyone offering her unsolicited parenting advice. Yeah, I don't blame her. And stated she planned to raise her baby vegan and without vaccinations. Well, I'm telling you, if, you, if you're going to be vegan... You're probably going to need vaccinations, but that's me. <laughs> she said, if you, if you don't know what it's like to have the entire world openly criticize, judge, throw uninformed opinions, and curse you, Hans, how does that feel? Uh, try being openly, <laughs> openly pregnant vegan on Instagram. Having... Why, why, why does anybody be on Instagram? Anyway, having a natural, drug-free home birth in water with a midwife and a doula who has the intention of raising a vegan child without vaccinations. Oh, that, I, I, I can't even imagine something more that I would not enjoy being around. The person I would not enjoy being around. <laughs> oh, I can't read this to you. Like I said, grab me ready to see you earlier anyway. Anyway, um, I, I just was kind of um, taken aback by the fact that there is such a thing as a celebrity tattoo artist. I would have never even considered that such a thing might exist. I I mean most tattoo shops they're like these dark little holes that you go in there and I, I just uh, I can't, I can't imagine um but good on her for not not take bending under the pressure and doing what these people want LA Ink Star <laughs> This, this, uh, Hans, <laughs> oh, God, yeah, no, I see, I already shared some of these, and I, I just, uh, I'm looking, now. I, I got, I got nothing for you, nothing else for you, um, what time is it, don't matter, we can play some more music, play some more music. Because I don't see any additional. See, people who wrote about Jesus were shooting heroin. I'm pretty sure there was no heroin uh, back in uh, the days when Jesus was supposed to be around. Um, they, they could have been smoking opium, though, because um, that was around and they were in the right area of the world for that. So that, there definitely could have been some opium going on there. See, Hans, who are you? Who are you to say. Jesus never smoked pot. Of course he smoked pot. And all of the all of the other people smoked pot too. That were that were hanging around him. What do you think those twelve dudes were doing at before the Last Supper? They were just gonna sit around and eat a bunch of bread? No, they were freaking having they had the munchies. And and they were they were ready to start choking down some food there. And and he said, Watch this, I'm gonna turn this water into some wine here. <laughs> <laughs> Telling me these guys weren't high. <laughs> oh no no no! These guys were stoned out of their mind. Yeah, yep. 
And, and the only reason that Judas went and sold about is he needed some money for a new patent new stash. So he said, hey, I, I know I can get me a little bit of cash here. I'll just sell out this guy over here. Yeah, I don't like him anyway. He thinks he's my friend, but, you know. <laughs> oh, let's hear some more tunes. <laughs> Oh. Wait, wait, wait. I played Black Sabbath at 78 speed, man. I saw God. <laughs> uh, a, little, a little something for you teaching Chong fans out there. For Hansel there, the crazy world of Arthur Brown doing fire. And before that, we had Robert Gordon and Link Ray doing fire. <laughs> a different version, different song. Uh, and we kicked it off with a boxified request. Head, H-E-D, Planet Earth with Blackout. Oh man, I tell you, it's a funny. Uh, this is. I'm, I'm, watch, I'm, wa I'm watching the uh, the chat here. Got you know, a little bit crazy stuff going on there in the chat room. I'm gonna scroll up here to to the older days and see what uh, I got up here in some of my older older stuff, uh, older older requests. Anything good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll do that one. That'll work. These will work. I'll go up here back to... What am I going back to? March 13th of this year. <laughs> and I and I specify of of this year because I can certainly go back to previous years uh, of uh, songs in my list. And uh, let, me go, let me go back a little further. See what else we got hanging around up here. Oh, yeah, hey, hanging around up here, hanging around up here. <laughs> uh, what, what is this weekend? Oh, it's Father's Day weekend, so finally, I'm right, it's Father's Day weekend. It's It's been a long time since I've been saying it's Father's Day weekend. Well, I, I think this is the third week. <laughs> that I've been saying that, but finally I'm right. It is actually fa Father's Day weekend. So any of y'all that are out there that are fathers, eh, you know, happy Father's Day to y'all. To 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 y'all. Who's a father here? Don sees a father, and. Um, Rome's is a father, and um, Cowboy Tech. Do you have kids? I, I don't know. If Cowboy Tech has kids. He may have a kid. Um, let's see. Let me go through my list here. Uh, Asmo, nope, no kids there. Um, free enslaved. Uh, I don't. I don't. He's never mentioned any kid. You got kids, Cowboy Tech? All right, man. Happy Father's Day. Uh, I don't. Uh, free enslaved. I don't think he's ever mentioned a kid. Java Doctor, definitely a father. Hansel, definitely not a father. <laughs> Want a taco? I don't know about his fatherhood status. Um, Rob works? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kill that damn duck. All right. Um, oh, I missed it. Somebody else get it. Let's see here. Uh, who else we got in here? Flash? Are you a father, Flash? I don't. You, I don't think you've ever mentioned a kid. Frumpy. He doesn't seem like. Well, he could be a father. Goober. Probably not a father. Oh, you have a kid. All right. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Kozu. I don't know. Moe. I don't know. Pox does not seem like a father in type. My kids are pissed. I married Cirque. Well, pfft. kids, more than one. All right. And Barman, he's a father. He he uh, spawned Fluke. <laughs> oh, 
Well, I don't know why they'd be pissed off about marrying Cirque. She's cool. Uh, that would be uh, that. That seems to me like uh, they would be poxified as the father of Skittle. There you go. <laughs> All right. So I guess I am the father of Barman. <laughs> He was born in the mid-90s. Oh, what, what, wait, if, if, Bar, if Barman is the father of Fluke, which he's not really, I just made that up, but if Barman were the father of Fluke, and I was Barman's father, then I would be a grandfather. 25 and 39 years? Holy hell, how old are you? <laughs> God, 58, same as, well, I'll be 58 in August, um, Godzilla, yeah, he's a father, <laughs> anyway, even if you're not a father, most of you probably have a father, huh, I didn't, I never had a father, <laughs> that's all right, never needed one, okay, um, music. We're just going to hear more music. I don't really got nothing else to tell you. No father anymore. Yeah. I never had one. Never needed one. Never wanted one. But, uh, this is, uh, for those of you that won't be missed. Quite the jam there. Samantha Fish and the band doing It's Your Voodoo, working from the cutting room in New York City back in December of last year. Ah, oh, yeah, very fine stuff, very fine. Before that, we had the Stranglers hanging around, and we kicked it off with L7 live at Hellfest 2015 doing a shit list for all you people that won't be missed. Or all you assholes that won't be missed. Yeah, you made my shit list. <laughs> oh, and it doesn't take much, really. Yeah, that's an easy list to get on. Uh, <laughs> it's not a real easy list to get off of, but you get on that list. Well, you know, it, it doesn't take much. You just have to be you if you're one of those kind of people that you are. I'm not going to say. If I told you, it'd be too easy. You just made the list, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> All right, we'll do this. We'll do this. Yeah, I was going to do another one by for him, but this 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 will work just just as just as well. Same request or different song. Yep. Burp, burp, burp. All right, what do we got there? Six, eight, eight, and twenty, eight and a half. All right. <laughs> Don't mind me. I do a little uh, adding <laughs> during the. Uh, all right, we'll do this one too. Eight and a half, thirteen and a half. Yeah, that's good. Oh well, we might, we might might shoot a little bit over. All right, we got. I gotta. I gotta go right on in. Gotta go right on in. I don't have any time to mess around, talk around. I got. I got. I got serious stuff to handle here. All right, we got some music to play for you. <laughs> this is ministry. Uh, yeah, that was Pat Travers. It was that Pat Travers band doing Black Betty at? Some place called the Bing Lounge. I didn't know Bing had a lounge. <laughs> anyway, the Bing Lounge back in 2012. Uh, before that, a Cowboy Tech request from several months ago. Count five with a psychotic reaction. And we kicked it off there with Ministry doing Wargasm. And uh, that'll wrap it up for tonight. 
uh, you do don't miss the dark table tomorrow but with Flash and Vinny instead of Grams, and uh, that, that should be interesting. It's at noon Eastern, right here on RLM Radio. I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern, right here on RLM Radio <laughs> with the Blues and uh, trivia in the chat. Hal Anthony will come up after that with the behind the woodshed, opening up a big old can of whoop-ass. Gary L. will be on later that evening, 7 p.m. with Gigi's boo going down the road list traveled. Grammy will be back again on Wednesday in her rocket chair right where she belongs. Peace, y'all.